The components of a liquid solution cannot be separated using filtration, but they can be separated using chromatography, which takes advantage of the differences in intermolecular interactions of the components of the substance. So in paper chromatography, you have a solvent, which can be polar like water or nonpolar, and a paper with the substance that we're going to separate, which is the stationary phase. So for example, there's a black ink dot that's composed of a mixture of several covalent substances. And the paper is dabbed in water with the substance slightly above the water. And the solvent travels up the paper via capillary action. And as the solvent front moves upwards, the separated substances appear. And they keep traveling further with the movement of the solvent front. So if the solvent is polar, like water, then the most polar component will travel the furthest. So for example, being the green component here. Whereas the red component is the least polar. And this solution comprising the different components of the substance is the mobile phase. And defining the retention or retardation factor is the distance travelled by the solute on the distance travelled by the solvent front. Then the most polar substance has the higher retention factor. Now if a non-polar solvent was used, then the red substance would instead travel the furthest. And there's different variations of chromatography that exist, such as descending, ascending, circular paper chromatography, 2D paper chromatography, and so on. But we cover the basics here. Thin layer chromatography is used to separate the components of a solution and it's similar to paper chromatography. Except here you have a thin inert plate, for example glass, and that's coated with silica gel, which is a thin porous and polar coating. And this is the stationary phase. And the stationary phase enables the solvent to move through it against gravity using capillary pressure. Now this plate is placed in a closed chamber to keep the experiment stable by preventing evaporation of the solvent and so on. And the plate with the analyte on it is dabbed in a solvent with the analyte above the solvent front and the solvent front moves up the stationary phase and the analyte gets separated. So you can see that thin layer chromatography is color dependent to enable us to see those analytes. And this solution with the separated components is the mobile phase. So in this case the red component is the most polar because it's attracted most to the polar stationary phase with the green analyte being the least polar and travels the furthest. And again defining the retention or retardation factor, which is the distance travelled by the analyte, on the distance travelled by the solvent front, and taking the reference point at the original sample, We can make these measurements to determine the retention factor for each component. With the least polar pigment has the highest retention factor. Column chromatography is used to separate compounds from a liquid or gas. So initially the column is packed with a polar stationary phase. such as silica gel, 
and then the analyte is injected in the column and then an eluent is injected to separate the sample. So this is a polar substance such as water or ethanol but less polar than the stationary phase. And different compounds are attracted to the eluent and get separated. So the eluent moves through the stationary phase with the analyte molecules being attracted to it and the most polar analyte, being the green one, travels the least distance as it's more attracted to the polar stationary phase, whereas the red analyte travels the furthest and exits the column first. And the eluted molecules are collected and analyzed using a composition technique. And that's a basic idea behind column chromatography. Distillation separates chemical species from a mixture by taking advantage of the known boiling points. And a typical example is a mixture of water which has a boiling point of 100 degrees and ethanol with a boiling point of 78 degrees. So the mixture is placed in a distillation flask And a thermometer is used to monitor the temperature to ensure one substance boils at a time. And you have a heat source or heating plate to boil the mixture. So at 78.2 degrees, you get ethanol vapor being produced. And due to the molecules bumping into each other, you also get some water vapor, which is an impurity. Now the vapor passes through a condenser which consists of a cold water inlet and outlet where the water passes through the outer tube to cool the sample. And the vapor turns into a liquid which is the distillate. So due to impurities the distillation process needs to be repeated and you can't achieve 100% purity due to the vapor pressures. So one cycle of distillation is known as simple distillation. And a similar technique known as fractional distillation. We have staggered ridges in the tube which are close together. So at 78.2 degrees, which is less than the boiling point of water, the water vapor is going to condense and get caught onto the ridges to avoid dropping back into the sample and it's going to evaporate again. So this enables multiple cycles of simple distillation and avoids running those simple distillation cycles manually over and over. Dye is dotted on a thin layer chromatography plate and three pigments are observed to travel the following distances with respect to the position of the dye. And the solvent front travels 8 centimeters. Now assuming the stationary phase is more polar than a solvent, which pigment is the most polar? Well the most polar pigment is the red pigment because that travels the least distance because it's most attracted to the stationary phase. Now one of the pigments are placed on another TLC plate and the experiment's repeated and the pigment travels 2 centimeters and the solvent travels 5.33 centimeters, which is the likely pigment that was dotted. So here you can calculate the retention factors for each pigment by dividing the distance traveled by the pigment on the distance traveled by the solvent front. And you can compare that with the retention factor from the second experiment. Now if the experiment is repeated using paper chromatography with a polar solvent, rank the retention factors of the pigments from the lowest to highest polarity. Well in this case, 
the red pigment will travel the furthest. So therefore the retention factor of the red pigment will be the highest.